Hey guys, uh, yeah, Justin Bieber, 800 times slower. Pretty cool, huh? Listen to a little more of it. So this is really beautiful, I think, actually. You should take a listen to it because it's kind of amazing to listen to these chords kind of rebuild themselves at such a slow tempo. The way every harmony takes a really long time to kind of develop, it's pretty amazing. So I wanna to talk today though about, uh, this is a, another tutorial about the granulator. So hopefully all of you have gotten this up and running. Please try and get this up and running. Um, you're, you, are, you do have an assignment this week in the granular synthesizer. So if you can't get this working, you need to let me know about it. Um, and I can try and help you figure it out, okay? So I wanna talk about, we talked about granular synthesis in general and you should now kind of understand how it works. And I wanna show you some other really cool things I can do in the granular synthesizer. Um, so, you know, another thing that's really useful to think about with granular synthesis is how it's used in sound design, okay? Um, if you think about, for instance, creating a sound, sound effects for film or television, you know, a granular synthesis is really useful for creating animal sounds, like, you know, uh, creating original, like, sci-fi sounds for an alien or something. But it's also really good for mimicking um, the sound, for instance, of if you need to make the sound of thousands of, of particles of grains of sand blowing in the wind or something like that. I went to, just as an example of how you do this, I went to Freesound, downloaded this recording, which is just a single fly, actually, buzzing. It's a great recording, actually, of a fly. So what I did was I took that, um, if, if I go to the granulator, um, you know, this is a perfect example of taking a single sound and turning it into a swarm right because now i have this opportunity to take this single recording and you know i'm going to make my length pretty long i'm going to make my rate very pretty fast and let's hear what we get from the granulator let me make sure all right i'm also going to change the pitch so that it's randomizing the frequency let's give it a little bit longer release time So you can see how I can create a really cool effect here. If I do scatter, that's going to disperse every sound across the spectrum here, or across the stereo field, right? So I'm able to get a pretty cool sound here um, from a single recording of flies, right? Because I basically am multiplying that sound by a thousand and mixing it together. You know, imagine too, you're trying to design something for film and you're supposed to mimic the sound of a thousand marbles on the ground, right? Well, doing something like that in Logic would be very intensive if you have a thousand audio files to deal with. But here you can kind of make it pretty fast because it's just basically blendering a sound together, right? So anyway, so that's kind of, um, one of the really interesting aspects of granular synthesis that you can do. Um, here's another really cool thing about granular synthesis. So, you know, it, what's interesting about video, if you think about video, if we freeze frame on a video, what you get from that is um, that video stops, right? You see the video, the image is frozen. But in audio, when we freeze a frame, what we get instead is silence, right? If I pause a recording, it just stops playing, okay? So if I wanna do something, uh, the cool thing is now I can actually freeze frame an audio too. So let me show you what I mean. And I've done this, um, let me find a song. Hopefully this is a song everybody knows, American Pie, you guys probably all know. A long, long time ago, 
Right. And that's why I picked this because everyone should have heard this, hopefully. And I'm dragging it into the granulator. So the entire song is in this granulator now. And now I can do these amazing things where I can take a single moment and freeze it, right? Because I'm able to repeat a moment in time over and over in rapid succession. And that kind of makes a kind of a frozen moment in sound, okay? So, and let me let me play for you what this sounds like. Uh, let's find a couple good spots. Um, so, the first problem here is that my pitch, right? My pitch is varying with a random frequency, which is not ideal, yeah? So I have this random frequency here. So what I need to do instead is just set this to, um, I'm gonna, I want this to be one. So I'm gonna click it one time. Let's go to there. There we go. So that, so normal pitch on the granulator, normal speed and normal pitch is going to be one. So the transposition here should say one, and that will tell you that it's playing at the original pitch and the original speed of the sound, okay? Um, this is an exponential curve too, meaning that if I wanna go twice as fast, it's two. If I wanna go four times faster, it's four, right? Or sorry, three times faster, it's four. And then four times faster is eight. Um, if I wanna go half speed and half, to half like an octave lower, then the transposition needs to be 0.5, okay? And then 0.2.5 for an uh, for an uh, um, octave lower than that, and so forth, okay? So this is normal speed now, and you can see now with a little bit of reverb and delay, which helps me multiply the sound even more, I can now, let me stretch the grain out a little bit, I can freeze the moment of a sound in anywhere in this song. Right? So it's a really weird process that I'm basically freezing these moments in sound, right? But I'm, it's like, it's like a real pause on sound, okay? And a really cool example of this, actually, let me show you something I did a couple years ago. Um, SoundCloud. So a couple years ago, I, I was actually asked to rearrange um, Pharrell's Happy, which I'm sure you guys have heard. If you go to my SoundCloud, which is Paul Leary, P-A-U-L-E-A-R-Y, you'll find a bunch of tracks here. But the one I'm looking for specifically is this Pharrell's Happy. And what I did was I was actually asked to slow, make, make, make this kind of a sad version of Happy. So what I did was, um, well, if you listen to it, there are some moments though, where I wanted to use um, a moment in time from a recording. Um, and so what I did was I froze, I was able to freeze a moment in the song and then use that in logic when I put it together. So listen to a little bit of this. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Anyway, so you get the idea, right? Like there are these moments where the the choir actually, the supporting vocalists behind him say, you know, because I'm happy and they hold this chord. And what I did was I froze that chord in time so that I could use it in this slowed down version, kind of a sad version of this song, right? Um, so it's a really cool effect and you can do some really neat stuff with being able to freeze the moment in a sound in a recording and use that, okay? So, and let me show you um, a couple other things that I can do in here. Remember that if I select a range in this song, what it's gonna do is it's gonna choose the grains randomly inside the selection, 
right? So it's going to choose randomly, um, which can be interesting. But again, that most of the time it's going to make a jumble, right? Because it's going to jumble up all the sound and every moment is different. So the chords are going to mix together. It's going to be a kind of a hot mess depending on what you're doing with it. Let's hear what this sounds like. Yeah, so this is kind of, you know, I, I talk about this too. The classic granulator synthesis sound is like the sound of a vacuum cleaner. Um, it has this kind of like, it turns, it turns into the sound of noise, right? Because it's just playing a, a wall of a bunch of different moments in time. And it ends up being just noise because there's no defined pitch. So, but I can do some really cool things with the with these controls up here at the top above the the um, the thing here. Okay, above above the the window, the audio window. So if I turn on cycle, what this actually does is create an LFO. All right, and remember LFO means low frequency oscillator, right? And what, I'm, what I need to do is set the selection range, which is going to widen or, or narrow how much of this sound is, is played back. And then in addition to that, you'll see what's happening if, I'm, if I turn this up fast. What it's doing is it's sweeping through the audio file in an LFO, okay? So the LFO is sweeping through the audio file like this. And if I set my milliseconds to be pretty short, so my, I'm sorry, if I set my width to be pretty short, 100 milliseconds, okay? I'm gonna turn down also my grain length. And I'm gonna turn this cycles down to very, very slow. And what that's gonna do is basically slowly pan through the song and it's going to reiterate the moment in time that's being played over and over, right? And what this should do is give us the Justin Bieber 800 times slower effect because it's going to basically um, slowly pan through the sound, song, right? Reiterating moments very quickly. So let's see how this works. Let me get, get the cursor back to the beginning here. And then I'm gonna really slow this down. So slow that you would, won't even really see it moving. But let's hear what we get when we do this. All right, it's now probably, all right, I'll turn it on. So listen to this now. So really cool effect, right? And what's happening is that my this is panning right now, but it's panning so slowly. It might take an hour to get through this whole song, but it's panning so slowly that it's slowly advancing that playhead and repeating a moment at 10 milliseconds per second, 10 milliseconds, right? Which again, thousand samples per second at 10, right? Is that right? 10 times, oh no, it's not. Sorry, totally wrong. 100, right? So we're hearing 100 samples per second were being repeated, and the grain length is a little bit longer, and I've set the transposition to be one, so it's at normal speed, right? So you don't hear any variation, and you hear it at normal speed. But you get this really amazing effect. <laughs> If I turn up my attack time, so turning up the attack time is going to help too, right? Here's my ADSR, right? I can change the shape of every single sample as it comes out. 
And if I raise my attack time, what it does, it softens that edge of the beginning of every sample to make it a little bit softer in sound, which is making this more lush and beautiful, right? Anyways, such a cool effect. Um, let's talk about a couple other things. We have some global effects here in the center that I want to sh show you a little bit. So you can see here, I can actually link my grain length, my grain rate, and my transposition, and also the EQ. I can link all those things together using this LFO right here or randomizer. So watch what happens if I turn the LFO on. So you can see it's right now it's oscillating based on this uh, window here. If I make this narrow, see what it does? It chooses, it randomizes inside that area. And then if I make this rate a certain length, you can see what's happening. See how my length up here and my rate and my rate are connected via these two things, okay? I can do the same thing with pitch if I turn trans on. Let me make this long. So now look, my transposition is also doing that, okay? So listen, now we should hear some really crazy stuff. Do random frequencies again. So if I turn on the EQ, if you look here, you can see that the EQ is also doing this. So anyways, really cool. I can link these things together basically and create more like connection between the sounds. The cool thing too is that obviously two has its own controls, right, for this second one. And then the center here, I have this link button. And what that does is it links together number one and number two onto a single unified LFO. See that? Or a single unified randomizer. So watch what happens when that one's on. If I turn this on, um, why isn't it randomizing? Huh, that's not working at all. Now the LFO works. Well, I got some bugs to work out, I guess. Okay, so anyway, so that is the main, you know, that's the stuff I wanted to cover in, in the granulator again, um, just a little more, some other cool things you can try out with this. The last thing I wanna do is just reiterate again how you save a recording, okay? I want you to record your assignment for Friday. There's gonna be a, um, I don't know if there's gonna be a quiz on this. I'll let you know. Um, and there's not really, I didn't really cover anything specific that is quizzable. Everything I covered is already in the quiz for Monday. So again, to record a sound of what the granulator does, I have to click the save button first. First, don't forget, it's first. And then I have to name this, right? Like granulator sample, sample. Um, I can I'm put it on the desktop, save. You can also choose your file type and format here. I would go with AIF or WAV, obviously. I say save. So now it basically has allocated space on the desktop to save this, okay? So now I hit record. It's recording now everything the granulator does. <laughs> so, great. When I'm done recording, I stop the recording. And now I have a recording of that sound in Amadeus, right? So here it is. So that's how I basically am able to use these things in Logic or in Pro Tools or in Ableton is that I have to record them. They don't open in the DAW, right? You can't send this, isn't MIDI. It has to be recorded as an audio file and then used that way, okay? So anyways, so take, you know, your assignment is to come up with two or three interesting sounds and to email them to me. Um, I will be putting that on Blackboard as your assignment for this week. Um, and, you know, you guys feel free to use this. I have students that still use this granulator 
in sound design stuff they do on campus or you know they they use it for years i mean i you're free to use it as long as you want um anyways yeah that's all i have for today um talk to you soon